Hello everyone, it's Alana. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I have a very special video for you guys today. We're gonna to be talking about two of my absolute favorite things, homeschool and planners. Are y'all ready? Let's get started. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the different planner options for homeschooling and the different types of planners for homeschooling, as well as how to set up your planner for homeschooling. From the big teacher planner all the way down to the micro happy notes, there are so many options. But before we jump into that fun stuff, the most important thing that you guys can do when you decide to homeschool is to check in with your specific states regulations and requirements when it comes to homeschool. If you are in the US, every state has its own individual requirements and regulations for homeschooling. Some states are heavily involved, some states are not involved whatsoever. So if you're in a state that requires you follow a curriculum, guidelines, do regular check-ins and testings and things like that, that is something that you need to know before you even get started. So a simple Google search should give you all of the information that you need. We are also in a very unique situation right now where some families are planning for school at home, but not homeschooling. So I know so many of y'all have reached out to me and you're like, I'm homeschooling, but not by choice. What do I do? So I will hopefully have some tips that are helpful for you guys as well. If at any point anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me on Instagram at Alana, where I have been sharing tips and guides all week long to hopefully help you guys out with homeschool and going through this process. Okay, so now let's jump into the planner fun. I'm gonna start right here on top. Of course, yes, this is not a planner. However, the micro happy notes is amazing when you have a preschool kiddo. So one thing to use these for is their printing practice. So you can write in the dotted lines, their alphabets, things like that, and have them trace over so that they can practice their printing, their alphabets, their name, simple three letter words, anything like that for kiddos just starting out. And they can practice this and fill it all up. And when they are done, you have an amazing little keepsake as well as pages and pages that have been beneficial to them starting out. In addition to that, the skinny classic planner as well as the mini planners are great for parents who have little kiddos who do not have a heavy curriculum just yet. There's not a lot of things that they have to cover. So this is great if you just wanna keep track of the small courses and classes that they're gonna be doing for homeschool each day. Also, these are great for you parents who are schooling at home, but not homeschooling. So if you have to keep track of your kiddo getting onto a virtual academy or Zoom classes or the things that have been sent home for them to do, these are great keeping track of that without taking up too much space and you having too much work to do. These are perfect for that. Next are the teacher planners. So I have a classic and a big teacher planner. Now I will say, you do not need a teacher planner for homeschool. They're great to have, there's so many uses for them, but it's not required. If you're like, I just wanna use a regular classic planner, I'm gonna be doing the planning and curriculum, I want something that I'm gonna enjoy using, totally fine. There are so many options, you can do that. There are ways to set it up in a planner if you don't wanna use a teacher planner. Basically, any planner works for homeschool as long as you are staying consistent and then color coding does wonders. You guys, just make sure that you are finding a way to separate the subjects and the units and the things that they have learned each day so it's easy to go back and reference when you are reviewing and testing your kiddos. So I will share with you really quick some of the things that I have done previously for homeschooling without using a teacher planner. So here is a monthly layout that I did in a classic extension pack. So this is for the month of April and I just 
did extracurricular activities that were for homeschool but not necessarily course and subject related. This fits into any classic planner. You can get the extension pack on the Happy Planner website. It is not required to have a teacher planner to be able to do this. So I just chose something that we would do every day of the week. We also had Easter in here. We did Easter theme art projects, the egg drop build, for physics class, anything like that. This is a great way to use your monthly layout. You can use it in the teacher planner or any other classic planner that you have. You can just put in the extracurricular activities that you would like to do. Again, I think this is from April, so it is quarantine friendly projects that we did, like take a virtual museum tour, a cooking class, a yoga class. These are available on YouTube. You just search kid friendly yoga class, things like that. We took a nature walk around our neighborhood and they journaled about what they saw. We did a living room spelling bee, an Earth Day assignment. We planted a garden, things like that. So if you want to use these ideas, feel free or you can come up with your own, decorate it, whatever you want to do. This is a great way to use that monthly spot in your planners. So in addition to using the extension pack pages for homeschool, I was using a monthly layout planner. And here is what I did for the month of April. I did the bucket list things that we wanted to do for the month, the larger activities that were a priority for that month. It was National Poetry Month and Earth Day was in that month, so I wanted to make sure that we covered some things for that in addition to the courses that we were already doing. And then notes to myself were the things that I needed to grab to make sure that those projects went smoothly when we sat down to get them done. Also, I kept track of the kiddos' water, vitamins, and exercise as well. This monthly layout works really great for that and I wrote the daily things that we did for school on the daily task pages. So this is a little bit vague because I was using that extension pack and I would color code and kind of memory plan about how their day went. I would write in the different things that they learned for school that day, how their day went, making sure to color code everything so that I could quickly see the colors for the different subjects and things like that. This does seem a little bit overwhelming and like a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it to have it all in one place to memory plan because our kiddos do not get report cards and progress notes and things like that from teachers or yearbooks when they're homeschooled. So it's really great and really fun to keep track of the lessons that they're doing, but as well as the memories that were made during the day. Another thing that might be great for you for homeschooling if you have younger kiddos without a huge curriculum or if you are schooling at home but not homeschooling and you just want to keep track of what your kiddos are doing are the daily task sheets. These are also available on the Happy Planner website as well as I've seen them at multiple Walmarts from time to time. It just depends on if they choose to carry them or not. So you have your hour sheet or excuse me, your hour portion on the sheet over here and then the get it done and the top priorities. So these are great for just making sure that your kiddos stay on task. Again, I recommend it for the parents who are schooling at home, not necessarily homeschooling, and then ones with younger kiddos who are not having to keep track of bigger subjects and units and courses and things like that that they're covering. For something like that, you're gonna want a heftier planner with a lot of space and a lot of room to write and plan out the important things when you have a big workload like that. Which moves me into the teacher planners. So these are great for homeschooling. There are a couple of things in here that you wouldn't use, but it's it does not make the planner any less awesome for homeschool. It has the room and the school on the first page. We don't need that, but again, it doesn't take away from how amazing the planner is to use for homeschool. There's an academic calendar, schedule, things for substitute. Again, not necessary, but you could definitely use this for different notes that you have. And then the perpetual calendar. And then the month overview, birthdays, important notes, things like that. The monthly view right here. Again, this is a perfect spot to plan out those extracurricular activities that you want to roll into your homeschool, but they're not necessarily curriculum and course related. They're just fun extra things, which I do recommend doing. Homeschool shouldn't be just about 
sitting down and duplicating public school. Make sure that you're doing the virtual museum tours and any activities that are available for you. Definitely make sure that you're doing those whenever possible. Okay, so here's the layout for the classic teacher planner. I'll show you in the big. It looks the same, it's just larger, which is great if you have older kiddos and you need more space to write. So you have the days of the week. It does not come with Saturday and Sunday, so if you are doing activities on Saturday and Sunday, you may want to memory plan those or just tip in and notes pages or anything like that to plan those out. So for my kiddos, this year I'm going to be using the big teacher planner layout. We have five subjects, core subjects, that we're going to be doing each semester, and then under the umbrella of that subject is going to be additional learning. We call them units. So for example, under math, you might have things like ratios, geometry, algebra, measurements, things like that. So I would write the time that we started, also try to stick to a routine as much as possible. I know homeschool is flexible, but it's really beneficial for kiddos if we stick to a routine. So I will write down the time and then like math and the things that they did underneath that and then so forth for the other subjects that they're learning. Luckily for me, there's five subjects that we're going to be learning, and then I have two kiddos, so I'm going to use the last two slots at the end of the day to write about my kiddo, how they did, you know, if it was difficult for them, if they really excelled at it, things like that. So that is what I will be using the teacher planner for in this area. Now, in the back of a teacher planner, there is something called a classroom checklist. So let me just grab this for you guys here. The classroom checklist, of course, this is going to be something to keep attendance for in public school, but there is a way to use it at home for homeschooling. And here's how I'm gonna be using ours this year. So we have the core subjects that they're going to be learning and then the units of each of the subjects. So math, we've got ratios and geometry, structures and measurements for engineering, and then algebra. And what I'm going to do with these slots is color code their progress and how they did. So if it was an easy day, a difficult day, if they found something challenging, there's going to be a different color for how they excelled or struggled with that subject that day. And I will be able to reference the date and go back and see what happened that day when it comes time for reviewing and testing. Also in this spot, if there's something that was really important, a big thing that they learned that day, I'm going to put a star over the top of the color so that when I'm looking here to set up their exams, I see the star means that there's something big and important that they learned that day that I definitely want to include in the exam. So I will go back to that date in my planner, pick up that information, and be sure to include it in their exam. So while it is going to be easiest for you to keep all of the homeschool planning in one planner as much as possible, there are other options and you can certainly use a planner that is not specifically a teacher planner. Some other things that I recommend having on hand for homeschool are just note pages. So any note pages, small or big, that you can click into your planner because when you have kiddos who are a little bit older, you're definitely gonna wanna keep track of how they're doing. The benefit of homeschool is if your kiddo is excelling at something and they have been excelling at, at it for a while and it seems easy to them, you can just move on. You don't have to stay put in that specific area. You can move on to something next. So I definitely recommend keeping track of their progress. You also want to make sure that they're not doing something too hard. If maybe you need to go back and cover it again or if they need to learn it a little differently to comprehend. So definitely keep notes somewhere and keep track of the progress. I also recommend that you pre-plan your curriculum. So if you do follow me on Instagram at Aurelia Lana, I have been sharing all week homeschool tips about curriculum and resources. So before you go ahead and fill up your planner with plans for school, make sure that you're pre-planning out all the core subjects and the, the different units that you want your kids to study underneath that. So there's gonna be two semesters for us. Here's the core subjects that they're going to be doing in semester one. Here's for semester two. And then here are the things that they're gonna be learning underneath that. And I wrote on the back as well. So we're gonna have it all covered. And then I recommend reviewing and assessing frequently. I wrote here every two weeks, but really I try to do it 
every Friday just to make sure that they've understood and comprehend everything that we've learned in the week. Test every four weeks. This is a basic general overview test of the things that they've done. Not a huge difficult exam, but not something as simple as a pop quiz either. So maybe just a couple of pages just to make sure that they understand it without looking at the references. End of semester midterm, so this is going to be in December before we end for winter break. They're going to have a bigger exam covering all of the things that they have learned in semester one. Then the end of semester final exam is going to be when we stop for summer and they're going to cover all of the things that we learned in semester two. So I definitely recommend pre-planning, having a course overview, getting your materials, getting your resources, all of those things, deciding how you're going to homeschool and what your state's requirements are before you set up your planner. So those are some options for homeschooling, for how to set up your planner, what planners to use, and hopefully this has been helpful to you guys. If you have any additional questions or comments, definitely be sure to let me know. You can check in the comments below. We can have a discussion, or you can reach out to me on Instagram, at Aurelia Lana. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, guys. Bye.